Let's have a search on QE. So QE stands for quantitative easing. Things to know. So it's a type of unconventional expansionary monetary policy, of course. Um, and the aim is to stimulate the economy. And it's usually that QE is used to stimulate the economy out of a recession. Um, times when it's used, it's used often when inflation is incredibly weak. It's way below target, target being 2% of CPI. Or it's going to be used when, well, basically, you've used all your conventional expansionary monetary policy tools. Perhaps it's interest rates. They're already incredibly low. Or it's that you anticipate that your conventional expansionary monetary policy is likely to be ineffective in using it. So therefore, you're going to need to use unconventional expansionary monetary policy. Examples within the UK of when QE has been used, well, firstly, 2008 during the great financial crisis. And of course, it's been reintroduced in 2020 following the COVID-19 health crisis. So how does QE work? Well, step number one is that the central bank will electronically or digitally create money. And that is added to the central bank's balance sheet, being the Bank of England in the case of the UK. Step two is that they will immediately purchase financial assets such as government bonds. Government bonds, of course, in the UK are referred to as gilts. And they will buy these financial assets, these bonds, from financial institutions such as commercial banks. And of course, these financial institutions such as commercial banks will be found on the FM, the financial markets. So basically, they have created cash and they've gone and they've bought these gilts from financial institutions. And of course, that means that the financial institutions will now be holding this cash. So now they're holding this cash, as in step three, the hope is that the financial institutions such as commercial banks, well, now they will try and loan this um, cash out to it could be a business or a consumer and the idea is if they do this it will help to stimulate the economy so that's how QE works in its simplest sense there's a few considerations to think about so consideration one is that well the central bank has injected demand into the government bond market now because they have effectively they've become a new player in the market so they've injected demand into the government bond market so because they've injected demand into the government bond market, the gilt market, well, that means the price of government bonds will increase. And if we're thinking about government bonds, we need to be thinking about yields here. And so therefore, when we're thinking about a government bond, well, the, it will be yield equals the fixed coupon rate divided by the market price times by 100. And we've seen here because there's extra demand, that means the price will go up. So if the price has gone up, that means the yield must fall. So we're having market prices going up because of the extra demand that comes from the central bank, but that leads to yields falling. And remember, yield is just the effective interest rate compared to the price of purchasing the government bond. So all that yield is, is that when you look to buy one of these gilts, if you're an investor, you're looking for a return, the yield. And so the yield has clearly fallen if you've had to pay more for this gilt in terms of the price. So if the interest rate on government bonds has reduced, that has knock on effects because the interest rate on government on government bonds has reduced. Remember, that's just effectively the cost of borrowing for the government. So a good potential advantage here is that it could ease the national debt burden because it's cheaper to finance to run that government debt. The cost of borrowing has fallen. So that's the first consideration. Now we'll move on to the second consideration. So the second consideration is that financial institutions, so commercial banks, for example, now they hold this cash from um, the original transaction of when the central bank gave those commercial banks, commercial banks that gave them those cash in exchange for the gilts. And obviously the gilts went back to the central banks. Well, what if they didn't look to pass that cash on in the form of loans to consumers or businesses. It might be that instead they use that cash to buy shares. And if they were to go and buy shares, well, that increases the demand for shares and clearly that would push share prices up. 
If it pushes share prices up, there's an argument that it creates a wealth effect, a wealth effect in that consumers feel wealthier, that's consumers that hold shares, and it increases their consumption. So there's possible advantages there. A third consideration is that, well, if the QE was actually too effective, and because remember, you use the QE when you had um, your inflation below target, well, if the QE was so effective, and it actually meant that commercial banks then lent on to consumers and producers and it boosted the economy it really stimulated the economy it could be that it actually led to qe overshooting your inflation target your two percent in the case of the uk inflation target however that's possibly unlikely now consideration for the final one is that qe will clearly as we've seen it leads to yields falling but what if they fell all the way to zero because if they fell to zero, then what is the point of an investor buying government bonds? Because they're using cash to buy government bonds. And if the yield was zero, then they may as well just hold the cash because cash is just as attractive. I mean, if we put it another way, cash and bonds, well, investors become indifferent to them. So cash here would become extremely attractive, especially if deflation is anticipated. And that's what's known as the liquidity trap. And that's when investors are indifferent between bonds and cash. And when that happens, central banks have lost control. I hope that helps and I'll see you at the next sesh.